Vajpayee comes up with the next and the last question for the evening. And he's saying, Namaste, sir. I want to try for India and the defense services, but my family and friends scare me. They say, when you can easily get a good and safe job in Delhi or Bangalore, why do you want to risk your life and become a soldier? What will you get? So how do I reply to them? Mohit Bajpayee. Mohit, you have to go to the fundamentals. Hmm? And when I say you have to go to the fundamentals, I'm not trying to assure you that you will be able to convince those who are trying to scare you away from the life of a soldier. Hmm? No argument is so absolutely persuasive that it can move even a die-hard person committed to falseness. But it is for your own understanding that you must know the fundamentals. Who are you and what do you live for? That's the question to be asked. When those around you say that you can have a nice, cozy, comfortable job in Delhi or Bangalore, they are basing their argument upon a certain view of the self. They think of the self as entirely physical, as entirely bodily, and they think, therefore, that the purpose of life is physical, carnal gratification. Hmm? These two things go together. When you will say that you are fundamentally just the body, right? Then you will have to say in the next breath that the purpose of your life is just the gratification of the body. So far, so good. But now, this raises an important question. What do you get by defining yourself as the body? Do you get love? Can the body really love? Does the body know love? Hmm? The body is just a biological equipment. It's a machine brought to the current state by the processes of evolution. All that you call as the nectar of life relates to your consciousness, not really your body. Equally, all that which you call as your deepest suffering again relates to your consciousness, not to your body. Think of the highest that you have ever attained in life. Was it really bodily? I hope the answer is no. Else it would mean that you probably haven't been living a very deep or rich life. Equally think of the deepest suffering you have ever experienced. Was it bodily? Chances are your answer will be no. Your joys, your elations are mental and so is your suffering. That which you call as mental does not really relate to your brain, it relates to your consciousness. Are you getting it? 
therefore you get nothing by defining yourself incorrectly as merely a body out in this world to gratify itself through consumption this definition is not only incorrect but actively harmful to you you will find going by this definition that you are able to do nothing about your deep sufferings going by your definition of yourself as the body you will find that you are not able to pursue any high joy because alleviation of suffering as well as attainment of joy are not things that can happen in a physical way are you getting it so you are unnecessarily condemning yourself to a wasted life by defining yourself incorrectly are you getting it hmm? the purpose of life therefore has to be the sublimation of consciousness our consciousness is an incomplete and suffering consciousness our consciousness is something in bondage that is continuously crying out for liberation and that's the purpose of life hmm? if that is the purpose of life how should you choose a job or vocation for yourself should you choose a job going just by the kind of money it offers or the kind of place geographical location you would be finding yourself at or should you consider what that job will give to you as a man of consciousness are you getting it the way you define yourself completely changes your choices in life define yourself as just a body and you will find that you are choosing one particular job define yourself as just a body and you will find that you are choosing one particular place to live at define yourself as a body and you will find that you are choosing one particular person to be with or marry and realize yourself as consciousness and you will find that your choices have totally changed so you need to have a correct basis for choice if the basis for choice is correct then life will be correct otherwise you will be leaving leading a very false life and that's all that you have one opportunity to live if you squander it then what do we have to talk about getting it so i do not really know why you want to be a soldier but i can probably see why those around you want you to have a comfortable and conventional job in delhi or bangalore or some other metro or abroad hmm? they want you to have all the safety and security that a job can give you but how safe and secure can the body be you know what your body is continuously inching towards right what's the point in trying to secure something that is destined to disintegrate or isn't it better to make the best use of that thing before it disintegrates tell me please you have a perishable item with you hmm it could be a food item or it could be some other consumable stuff what do you want to do with it secure it 
probably you can secure it, but for how long? It has come with an expiry date, like all perishables. Maybe you can secure it for one more day. But then the day after that, you will have to throw it away because it would have reached its expiry date. What is the point in continuously trying to secure it? Why don't you rather make use of it? That is the body. A perishable thing that has been given to you for three days. Don't secure it, it will last two days. Secure it, it will last a maximum of three days. Don't you rather want to use the body for your benefit? Remember, you cannot say you want to use the body for your benefit if you say that you are the body. To say that you can use the body for your benefit, first of all, you will have to acknowledge a difference, a separation between you and the body. Unless you are separate from the body, how can you use the body? I can use this pen, I can use this mic because I am not the mic. If I am the mic, how will the mic use itself? So to say that you can make best use of your life, you first of all have to understand that you are not the entity who lives. Who lives? The body lives. The body takes birth, the body dies. You are someone else. You are someone else related to the body, probably contained in the body, probably welded to the body in a very inexorable way but surely there is some difference between you and the body. You have very definite objectives and your objective is liberation. The body has no such objective. Your ways and the ways of the body are dimensionally different. Therefore, what relationship can you have with the body? Your relationship with the body must be to put the body to the optimum use, best use, before it reaches its expiry date. Are you getting it? Hmm? Therefore, the argument that your dear ones are putting forward are very insubstantial. They are saying, be safe, be secure, gratify yourself. Doesn't make much sense. Instead, of securing this perishable thing called body, make the best use of it. It is in this light that you must search for a job. Hmm? Now you say you want to become a soldier. Why do you want to become a soldier? If you want to become a soldier because it somehow fascinates you or it is fashionable in the part you come from, hmm? or it somehow feeds your ego and makes you feel more manly, then the basis of your choice is not really very different from that of your parents or near ones. The parents or near ones are telling you, you are just the body. You do not agree with them and you are saying, no, I am not the body. Instead, I am the subtle body, the ego, and therefore I want to be a soldier. If that is the reason you want to be a soldier, then there is not much difference between you and those you are contesting. They are asserting you are the gross body and you are asserting that you are the subtle body. Not much difference. Instead, if you want to become a soldier because you want to uphold something high, something worthy, something sublime, then it is a different matter altogether. If you want to become India's soldier because you understand the soul of India and you think that the soul of India is worth defending, then it's auspicious that you are thinking of becoming a soldier. Otherwise not. Are you kidding? It is not really the action that counts. One has to look at the intention. One has to look at the constitution of the actor. What makes you inclined towards the defense services? What exactly 
would you be defending? If you are defending just a piece of land or your own self-worth or ego, then there is not much in this choice. But if you know the great principles that India stands for, if you understand their worth, and if you realize that those principles are worth defending, that those principles are worth laying down your life for, then I would wholeheartedly recommend to you that you should definitely become a soldier. Right?